We're in La Paz, Bolivia, which rests on the Andes Mountains at more than 3,500 metres above sea level. It's popular with tourists for the infamous Deaf Road, Witches Market and Cholita Wrestling. We're here to explore something else that's been popular with tourists in the past. All of this is like, like the main avenue, El Prado. Yeah. And if you've read the book Marching Powder, then you'll know exactly why we are here. It's a true story of friendship, cocaine, and South America's strangest prison. We're here exploring a very famous prison. Uh, before we came to Paz, I'd never heard of it, to be honest, but it's a very famous prison called San Pedro. And Amy, tell us why it's such a unique, famous prison. Yeah, so it's, it's really famous because, as you can see, it's in this plaza. So prisons are normally outside of a community, but this one, strangely, is right in the centre. It's a male prison, and you might know it from a really famous book called Marching Powder. But surprisingly, it's quite an organised community in there. It's like a city in a city. Mm. There are businesses, restaurants, you have barbers, shoe repair shops, there's everything and a lot and of the families... there's a sauna in there as well. Well yeah, and this is the thing, if you have money, you'll have a good time in there because you can live real luxury with everything you can think of, including lots of alcohol and drugs. Mm -hmm. And that's why this place is famous because apparently, about 10 or 20 years ago, a lot of tourists would come here, go in the prison, stay there for weeks and have the most wild parties and then come out. They'd have to pay to get out. But nowadays, tourists still come here, but you can't get in. Or well, there are probably ways, but nowadays you can't get inside. No, we wouldn't recommend it because I think the capacity of the prison is about 400, but at the moment there's about 3,000 prisoners inside because they live with their families, they live with their wives and their children. It really is their own community inside. Uh, but today we've come here to have a look at the prison and to see someone called Crazy Dave. And we got your disease in a chunka welcome to the chunka i don't know you heard of guns and roses give me any intro right now so you can try to capture the logic to why they call me crazy dave crazy dave as he calls himself is an ex-prisoner of san pedro prison he spent over 14 years in the prison for attempting to smuggle cocaine every day at 1 p.m he stands opposite the prison recounting his life stories trying to take snow white back home that's what locked me up because for 2.5 kilograms of uh, cocaine and beer bottles, a six pack. I had to make magic happen. 30 grand I was offered. Well, have, uh, how many of your kids been in New York City? Raise your hand. Hey, little boy, you're a kid. I'm gonna name you Chris. What's up, Chris? I'm your daddy, Chris. How you doing, buddy? I can't fuck Chris. No fucking feeling. Knock, knock, open up the freaking door, amigos. Let's stay them back. I gotta see Snow White, boys. Amigos, come on now, open the fucking door. I'm Jonesy. I got the mic in my back. You open up. I'm gonna take this fucking door. Pretty please, amigos, open this fucking door. Amigos, knock, knock. Lay out the fucking door. Being from New York City, Dave is an English speaker. He was paid in narcotics to complete the English homework of the other prisoners' children inside. This is just one of the bizarre stories that Dave told us. He's a spectacular storyteller and well worth your time in La Paz. After experiencing more of this incredible city, we went on the Red Cap walking tour with guide Denise Vallejos. She told us why it's such a unique prison. It's unique because everything is crazy about it. <laughs> this prison is located in downtown of the city. It's in a very unsecure building that it was a religious building in the past. And this prison is just like a small city into another city, as, as the book says. Uh, pretty much everything has to be paid inside this place. You have to even pay an entrance fee that is not a legal charm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you have to pay to become an inmate, pretty much. If you're a poor person, you pay above 50 Bolivianos, 100 Bolivianos. But if you're a wealthy person, these guys will know it and they will take as much as they can from you. Mm -hmm. We've heard that there is people that even pay 14, 15,000, 100,000 Bolivianos. That's about 2,000 2, US dollars per person. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of money. But there is corrupt people who has it, so you can just pay. Denise went on to tell us how inmates had to rent or buy their cells. 50 Bolivianos per month will find you sharing a cell with 10 to 12 other inmates. But if you can afford a thousand US dollars per month, life will be good. 
It's no longer a cell, but a flat with a king-size bed, Wi-Fi and even a hot tub. Another expense on the inside is food. One meal per day is provided by the government, which is usually soup. The most lucrative businesses are, are the restaurants, as I told you. And it's because they made deals with some companies, and nowadays they have even exclusive rights to sell their products inside this place mm -hmm. to make extra money. So you find all these kind of crazy things. The, 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 the sorry, so one, one of those companies is? Oh, you want to know? Yeah. <laughs> Coca-Cola. Uh -huh. They have exclusive rights with these guys. So only Coca-Cola company products inside this prison, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's very funny. Because mm -hmm. also they help them with the tables and the umbrellas and the, on the plates and all this stuff. So everything is branded inside so the prison as well. It's branded wow. in the restaurants and in the stores that they have. Mm -hmm. And is it right that once you're inside the prison, it's not run by the guards, it's not run by police, it's run yeah. by the inmates? It's Exactly, because unfortunately the government doesn't have enough money to cover the expenses of this prison. That's why they can only afford to pay salary of 20 police officers in this place. And of course police are scared of getting inside a prison that has a population of about 3,000 people. So 20 against 3,000, if they make a riot or something, they are going to end up beaten to death or something. And since there are women and children in this place, the image doesn't want them to be damaged, so they even have a president, a vice president, they have delegates, so they have a better communication, and they are not going to have problems with, with the other inmates. So that it literally is their own community inside the prison, isn't it? It's literally an other city. It's wow. another town inside this. In the past, there used to be prison tours with big groups of people coming in to see how crazy was this place, because inside you find even football yards, a sauna, you can find all these kind of prisons. A sauna? A sauna. Inside a prison? There is a sauna oh my inside goodness. this prison. So it's very crazy. So always people was very curious about this place. There was a time that several people were making and uh, denouncing the police. They were telling the police that something landed to their front window of the car or something like that. They find out that there were diapers and inside the diapers they had frogs that we, we don't use much the name, but yeah, why not, let's say it is, it's cocaine, yeah, mm -hmm. you know? So they also make business out of, of, out of drugs in here. Mm -hmm. Bolivia is in the world's top three biggest cocaine producers, and most inmates are in for drug offences, smuggling, trafficking and manufacturing. Once inside, they have the skills and contacts to continue their trade. As a result, the cocaine is incredibly cheap and pure inside the prison. Do you recommend tourists try to get in the prison now? Not at all, not at all. It's, it's really dangerous, guys, inside. They're criminals, come on, so why would you like to see criminals in this place? <laughs> people and, do. Yes, I know, I know. Some people is very curious. But it's, it's very dangerous. And um, are scams. Guys, just want your money, you know? And you will have to pay lots of money not only to come in, but then later to go out as well. Mm -hmm. Because everybody will deny the existence of the tours and this stuff. So you pay to enter and you pay to go out. And mm -hmm. the escape, I mean, the exit payment, it's more expensive than the entrance ones, of course. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a fascinating and bizarre prison this is. Although we are glad to be standing on this side of the gates, our curiosity makes us think that we came to La Paz a few years too late, as it would be so interesting to see this place from the inside.